What is up my dashing dudes? I am the Hans TV, and I thought that we'd start your week out right with some infuriating entitlement in the form of r slash entitled parents. Our first Karen comes from Rion24. No, Karen, I won't move from an aisle seat in main cabin extra to a middle seat in the back of the plane. I've read the horror stories, but never had to deal with a seat switcher until recently. That's been to my dismay, as I thoroughly enjoy seeing entitled people get put in their place. I was on a four hour long flight within the US in an aisle seat in main cabin extra, 3-3 seating. Another 30 something guy, known as Guy from here on out, had the window seat and a kid who looked to be about 10 was in the middle. I was settled in and reading my magazine when I sensed someone standing over me. An entitled mom is standing there and in a somewhat witchy tone, can you switch seats with me? Me, um, potentially, where's your seat? Just in case it was first class, which I knew there was pretty much no chance of. Just a few rows back. Which seat specifically? Uh, 27E? Mild WTF facial expression? No, that's a middle seat in the back of the plane. One thing to know about me is that I am an inveterate movie quoter. EM's tone remained witchy for the rest of the ordeal. But I want to sit next to my son. That's not a me problem. That's a you problem. Your problem. This has now become fun for me. I need to sit next to my son. Did you ask the people in 27D and 27F if they'd switch seats with your son? Incredulous facial expression. No. Well, you'll have almost certainly more luck offering up a better seat than asking someone in main cabin extra who paid extra money for their seat to go to the back of the plane. My son needs to sit next to me. The kid has been quietly fiddling with his iPhone the entire time, so he's clearly old enough to sit unaccompanied. He looks all right to me. Are you gonna move or not? Not. Come on. OP is not coming on anything. Yes, I referred to myself in the third person, just this once. Guy in the window seat starts chuckling under his breath. The entitled mom then becomes even more incensed. You're an a-hole! Flight attendant approaches. Is there a problem? This guy won't get out of my seat! I shake my head in disgust, pull out my phone and show the flight attendant my boarding pass. Ma'am, this is this man's seat. You'll have to go to your seat. But- Or you can get off the plane. The entitled mom shot daggers at the flight attendant and me, and then slunk to the back muttering expletives. Guy in the window gave me an approving nod. The kid was polite to the flight attendant and stayed put the whole flight. I couldn't believe the gall of this woman. She probably booked at the last minute and planned this by putting her son in the seat up front. This was definitely one of my most memorable flights, and I even got to throw in some Boogie Nights and Harold and Kumar references too. <laughs> I can just imagine this conversation. Switch seats with me. Uh, no. But I need to sit next to my son. <laughs> Our next Karen comes from I indeed like the pasta. EM can take whatever she likes because I'm your elder. Some background. I, a 12 year old boy, live in a nice neighborhood with my nice neighbors. My parents had gotten me a Razor scooter and a pair of headphones. I loved them and took the headphones almost everywhere. Now, the cast. Me, the illustrious OP, I indeed like pasta, entitled mother known as EM from now on, and C, my crush. This all happened a few hours ago, but I have the memory of a goldfish cracker, so I forgot some of the things said. Anyway, I was riding my scooter around the block while listening to some video game music, as 12 year olds do, and after a while I fall. I was in the middle of the sidewalk checking for bleeding when I felt a tap on my shoulder. EM, polite at first, excuse me, may you please move over? Oh shoot, I'm sorry ma'am, moving out of her way. And by the way, it's rude to talk to an adult with headphones on. Oh sorry, m mumbling about how teens are so disrespectful. I'm sorry? I regretted this right after I said it. The entitled mother, who is getting annoyed, grumbles, Why do you even need those? Oh, I'm just listening to music. You're too old for that. Let my daughter have them. 
I just then notice C, who is in my grade, is my exact age and at the same school, looking embarrassed. With all due respect, ma'am, I'm 12. You are such a bad liar. Just look at you. You are well over 13. I'm 5'11 and almost 200 pounds. I am broad, big, and a little chonky. So I see how she might have thought I was 13, 14 tops, but well over 13? Really? Just give my daughter your headphones. Me talking kind of slowly. No. Mom, I really don't need headphones. Quiet, sweetheart. Now to me getting louder. Just give me the god dang headphones. She ripped them off my head, making my phone, which was in my pocket, rip out too. Then disconnect from the wire and fall into the sidewalk. Ironically, she ripped off my headphones while I was listening to Smash Ultimate Theme at the exact point the lady said, Every soul has a whisper of light. I pick up my phone and check for cracks, when EM snatches that from me too. What the hell, lady? In a very annoyed tone, Mom, stop harassing him! You are being very disrespectful to me, so I am taking this as punishment. Now to see. Do you know this man? Yes, he goes to my school. Please give him his stuff back. Why on earth would I do that? He was very disrespectful to his elders and you are too. Uh, just give me my stuff back, please. Why are you so desperate to get them back? Are you listening to something bad? No. You are clearly lying. She puts the headphones on and screams. What satanic BS was that? I was very confused, because the only things that can be considered satanic are Megalovania and Azrael theme, both Underdale songs. I guess my phone was silently running through my songs because I catch my phone from falling and see Sans on the screen. She called Megalovania satanic. People go to hell for listening to garbage like that. Ma'am, I'm an atheist and bi. I'm going to hell anyway. Mom, calm down. My crush rips the headphones off of EM's head and hands them back to me. Thanks, c I got interrupted while I was saying her name. I'm telling your parents about your satanic rituals. She said it like she caught me molesting a goat on a pentagram. Bring me to your house. I must tell your parents about their evil son. And why on earth would I do that? So they can free you from your sins. I began laughing hysterically at this woman. Are you laughing at me? Th through laughing tears, yes! Mom, calm down. EM goes to slap me while I'm laughing, but I just put my arm up and block her. I am your elder and you have to respect me. While I'm wiping away the tears. No I don't, and my crush at the same time. No he doesn't. EM, really pissy. Just bring me to your freaking parents. I get an idea like a brick was thrown against my head. Sure. I grab my scooter, phone, and headphones, then lead them in the opposite direction of my house. After what was only like three minutes, EM gets impatient. EM sounding like a toddler, are we there yet? Mom, just stop. Jesus Christ, how far away do you live? Me, with a smug smile, about ten minutes the other way. EM gives me glares like Luigi's Mario Kart death glare. Mom, just leave OP alone and just go hu- She gets cut off by EM too, and she's ignoring her daughter. Listen here, you little bum. You will take me to your parents or so help me- Cut off by C. Mom, shut the heck up! EM shuts up and glares at C. You didn't just talk to me like the- Cut off again. You do this crap every other day. Stop being an entitled witch and just go so we can go home. EM was dead silent. She looked like she was in total shock. In fairness, I was too. I had never heard her yell. But my crush continues to tell her to STFU. Crush begins to walk away and entitled mother just walks away with her, still in dead silence. It baffles me that someone such as C could be produced by someone such as EM. I asked for C's permission to share this and she said it was fine as long as I don't use her real name. Do entitled parents not realize that they could literally be arrested for assault of a minor and destruction of property or stealing someone else's property which is called robbing? Do they? Like, are they that stupid? Our next post comes from Psycho Mouse. Aren't parents just so loving? Okay, so this is very fresh and I'm very pissed off. So I've posted a few stories of my family here and there. 
but if you haven't read them, here's a quick recap. I apologize in advance for the lengthy backstory part. Younger brother is a selfish idiot who will lie, cheat, and steal if it benefits him. A quick example of this. A few months after I was diagnosed with cancer last year, he shaved his head and started telling people that my cancer was his, for the sympathy. When I was doing chemo, he would only visit me if my mom paid him $300 to $500. He constantly tells me how I ruined his life for being sick and taking mom's attention away. So he's entitled to say whatever he wants. That's the least I owe him. My older brother is an actual murderer, and he's one of those people who are basically retarded but think they're super smart. He also has an incredible hair trigger for anger. Example here, he just had a baby and demanded that I see his baby. When I was going through chemo, I told him that I have basically no immune system and his kid could kill me. He called me a selfish liar and told me that he's basically a doctor because his construction job did a first aid training and that I was making it all, including cancer, up for attention. He actually blames me for him killing a 17 year old kid. Now, the person of interest for this story, my mother. She is the most entitled woman I know. She constantly uses my disease to garner attention and sympathy, and her hair trigger for anger is even worse than my older brother's. A quick example of this woman before I go on to the story. Several years ago, I broke my back due to some other health issues at the time. My bones weren't healing, so I had to go to do these injections into my spine to help with the pain. My mom decided she needed to be there when I got this done. So we are waiting in the room, and my mom is actively calling people and saying, and I shit you not, hey, can't talk right now, my son is about to have injections into his spine, I have to be here for him. So with that long intro done, let's get to the awesome story. A few days ago, my mom calls me in a panic. I know it's a panic because she called like 10 times in five minutes. I don't answer because, well, it's pretty clear why I wouldn't. After a few calls, in come the flood of text messages. She's demanding that I give her complete access to a Hudson's Bay company visa. I got one like 20 years ago, but haven't used it in like 17 years. So she starts telling me that creditors are spamming her, telling her I owe money on this visa that was never used and hadn't been used in a long ass time. It's probably even deactivated at this point. So. For the last few days, she harassed me about this visa and how important it is that I give her control of my account so she can pay it off. However, she doesn't do crap like this. So I called her out. I told her I know she's just going to get like a $5,000 visa and spend it on my crappy brothers and then wait for me to die so the debt just disappears. She admitted I was right and called me selfish for not giving her that power. She said, if you really cared about this family, you'd do everything you could to make sure we are happy when you're dead. And now she's, Christ, I really wish I was making this up, entitled to it for all the stress that I put on her and my brothers, and my death will bring the family back together. She continued on to say how I've let her down as a son, and how disappointed she is in me, and called me a selfish piece of garbage. Another day went by, and she went back to saying that creditors are threatening her. Meanwhile, my older brother actually freaking murdered someone and spent 10 years in prison. Currently, I get about 5 to 10 text messages a day going on about how important it is that I put her on my account. You need to answer me. They keep calling. OP, you need to take care of this. This is serious. If you don't take care of this, I will get evicted. And so on. So yeah, this is still going on. I'll make any updates about this current event should I need to. And yeah, just need to vent a bit. Ever since cancer, my family has gotten so much worse. Edit. Just FYI, these people are in my life as little as possible. I can't cut them out completely yet due to something I'd rather not go into, but believe me when I say that I do not engage them unless it's 100% necessary. OP, I, I really feel for you. To be going through the sickness that you're going through, and to be having to deal with these indignant dicks, I just, I can't wait until you're out of the situation. Hang on strong, man. You got much support from me. Our final post for the day comes from Charlie Blue 18 Entitled mother accuses my boyfriend of forcibly cuddling her son. So this happened a year ago now, and not even directly to me, but to my boyfriend. However, we were dating at the time so I was able to get all the details. 
The cast is the Entitled Mother, which is E.M., Innocent Kid, I.K., H for Henry is my boyfriend, fake name obviously, P is Principal, and H.P. are Henry's parents. Background. So, my boyfriend went to a private Catholic school in Australia. And this all happened during the marriage equality debates, which heavily divided a lot of Catholic schools and caused a lot of angry parents. I even have a bit of an entitled priest story for another time. So to the story. At H's school, there were frequent camp trips into the Australian bush where students were given the opportunity to gain a wide range of skills over the years they attended high school. This could be anything from medical training to rock climbing. The way these camps worked was that the students in grade 12, final year of school, were the leaders of respective activities that they had chosen to train in throughout school. They would run activities and work with a lot of younger students to teach them new skills. H was head of medical training and even worked with a local ambulance unit during camp. Over the past couple of camps, H had gotten to know IK more and more, as IK also wanted to leave medical training when he was in grade 12. He was one year younger than H. IK had really opened up and started to trust H as a role model figure who he could get advice from. IK told H about how he was really struggling with mental health issues and wasn't sure of what to do. Over the course of this camp, he was able to help IK find a psychologist and visit the school counselor to get proper support. Now, H and IK are on H's last camp before he goes into his end of school exams and eventually graduates and they are both sitting alone in the food tent one afternoon. They were having their normal deep conversations about friends when the conversation then went something like this. Hey man, I think I'm gay. Really? That's really great that you feel comfortable to tell me. Thank you. H was never really in the closet with anyone and most people knew he was gay. He never saw it as something to be ashamed of or to hide. You're the only person I've told. I'm really struggling to tell my family. Not because I think they won't accept me, but because it will change the way they behave around me. I guess he was wrong about that. They both went on and continued their conversation, but it pretty much went with H sharing a lot of his personal experiences when it came to coming out to family, and how ultimately it is a very liberating experience that allows you to be your true and most comfortable self. IK decided he would come out to his mom when he got home from camp. Let me be clear. H and IK only ever talked. There was no hint or suggestion of sexual intimacy between the two. H was 18 and IK was 17, so it'd be statutory forced cuddling, and they both knew this and were not attracted to each other, so neither party tried anything. Now, we flash forward to nearly two weeks after the end of the camp, and it's Sunday. H is trying desperately to study for his first major exam the next day, when his parent comes up to him and says, uh, P just called us. You're not allowed to go to school this week, as apparently you've been accused of engaging in some illegal activity. P was not allowed to tell us what this activity was, but it was apparently with another student. It seems there will be a meeting later this week with P to discuss what has happened. H understandably freaks out. He has no idea what he has done, and now he isn't allowed to take the first two of the state tests so they can graduate. The way our end of school exams work is that they were all crammed into four weeks, and whatever marks you get in these exams are used to judge where you rank with everyone else in the state. So missing exams and having to rely on an estimate is a big deal. H calls me whilst in the midst of a panic, and I calm him down and we talk about it. Eventually he calms down enough to realize that he hasn't done anything wrong and that he can trust whatever happens, he has nothing to hide or to be guilty about. The principal doesn't see Henry or his parents for the meeting for two weeks. Apparently, the accusatory party are not comfortable with the details being released and feel the need to stay anonymous to H and that he keeps away from school for the time being. This freaks out H even more and the principal eventually convinces the accusatory party to meet with him and let the principal be a messenger between them and H and his parents. They agree. Eventually, principal tells H and his parents that EM had gone to him and said, I camp. H forcibly cuddled my little boy and then told him to pretend to be a little gay. Yes, she actually said that to the principal. Is this true, IK? And the entitled mother is holding his hand so tight that P could see he was wincing out a bit from the pain. Yes. She then demanded that H not be allowed to attend school despite the exams while she talks to lawyers about what she can do. He was so shocked to hear this about IK but could not contact him or be near him due to the legality of the situation. The two boys would not be able to meet due to the law and be able to discuss what actually happened. In the final week of exams, H is told by P to go to the local police station as the principal has decided that the entitled mother is being too reluctant in providing any investigation and it was time to get the police involved. 
At the police station, H tells the officers his side of the story and is then told to wait outside while the police talk to EM and P in a separate room. H would later find out from P that the police had told them that there was absolutely no evidence to suggest forcible cuddling and that the security cameras in the eating tent from the camp confirmed that at least what H was saying was true. They then said that unless EM could provide more evidence, then H should be allowed to finish his exam and never have to see IK or EM again. EM went ballistic. How dare you let this man go? He has turned my son into a homo and touched him. H is a pervert and he should be locked up like one. My AK was a good boy until H got into his head. This is disgusting. I'll sue you. She was then escorted out of the building, saying that all police officers were gay and would burn in hell. P also later told H about how EM seemed very careful when she was being questioned, and never explicitly stated H forcibly cuddled her son because being discovered to have lied to a police officer is a huge case in itself. H was then allowed to complete the exams he hadn't missed and was able to get an estimate mark for the others. At graduation, H saw IK in the audience and apparently he looked like he hadn't slept in days. He was apparently pale and had lost a lot of weight. Later that afternoon when I was with H and his family for a late lunch to celebrate graduation, HP got a call from P to explain that they had received a call from a mother who had heard EM telling her friends how she had almost made the school man miss all of his exams, but then those freaking cops got involved and messed it all up. P apologized to H and HP and said that he would deal with the EM on Monday. He then asked H if he would like to make a case against EM for causing so much trouble for him the past month, but H just wanted to graduate and move on from high school, so he said no. The next year, IK was transferred to another school and EM was never heard from again. Due to possible legal issues, H has never tried to contact IK after everything to see if he was okay, but has heard from people at his new school that he now has a boyfriend, much to the anger of his mother. I'm sorry if this is super long and possibly very boring, but thanks for reading. Also because of the very high standing of the school involved, I won't be able to give any more details, so please don't ask. So what I'm getting here is that this Karen could not handle the fact that her son was gay so she tried to blame someone and accuse them of something that could literally destroy their lives. How entitled do you have to be? This pisses me off. Well, alright my dashing dudes, I believe that's enough infuriation for today, so I'm going to leave this episode of r slash entitled parents here. I hope you liked the stories, and if you did, I'll link them down in the description as always. And if you liked the video, subscribe, drop a like, and a comment down below with what you'd like to see me read next. A humongous thank you to those who have subscribed in the past few months. I can't explain to y'all how happy it makes me to know that y'all are enjoying my content. Also, if you want to keep up with my videos, me, and just like talk to me in anything, I do have a Discord. My link will be down in the description below. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.